There's got to be a point in all of our lives when something happens and we become a seeker. All right. Well, welcome to Seekers of the Eternal. Chris, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. <laughs> Good to see you, Jay. Welcome Always back, a pleasure. everybody. Yeah. And this is going to be a fun podcast today. Uh, I wanted to do something a little special with today's episode where this will be instructions for a guided affirmation meditation that I'd love to share with everybody. This is something that I really enjoy sharing with friends and I tell so many people about it. And I've always wanted to make a, uh, an audio that I could send to my friends to be able to practice this regularly. So I figured what we could do today is um, I could share my insights with you, Jay, about the practice. And you can ask me questions about what's, uh, you know, what comes up in your mind and that maybe will answer some questions that other people are thinking as well. Sounds and I prepare you for it. Yeah. And then um, we'll have a separate, a separate episode that will be free from instructions. You can just pop it on and use it daily or whenever you want to work with this practice. And so this is going to be, this is, this is a practice for uh, inspiration. And okay. <laughs> it's really it's really a good one because we all can use this uh, for so so many things in our lives. This comes from a book from one of my teachers, Swami Kriyananda, and the book is called Affirmations for Self Healing. And the last one that I recorded, the Happiness Affirmation, was from that book as well. And these are based on the the teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda. And they're just so powerful. It's like you just you realize that you can really be the programmer of your mind. And with affirmations, if you really do it wholeheartedly, if you really get into this, you can start to rewrite the pathways in your brain and the old ones will heal and these new ones will begin to arise. And you can just change <laughs> anything that you want in your life. And you can kind of go through each one of them systematically. And so I think it'll be a, a really powerful one. So with this, this is, um, I was, there's a couple of ways to use this, this, this affirmation practice. And the ways that it's been helpful for me is on one hand, you can use it for inviting inspiration to your life. You know, so often I think we just go through our lives and then we wait for a situation to come up and then we're scrambling to come up with ideas and racking our brains and researching and trying to force it to happen. Yeah, yeah. But if you can just in your life regularly invite inspiration and look for it, sometimes it'll show up in the strangest places. Mm. Sometimes it'll hit you a song lyric or something, you know, you see a flower or something in your life, if you're if you're inviting inspiration and then and looking for it and allow and you know just going, I know it's going to show up somewhere. And you're listening to your friends talk as if like inspiration can come through them at any moment. You know, from your higher self, your higher self can speak to you through your friends, can speak to you through a movie, through yeah. anything that you're doing. So yeah, it reminds me, you know. Um, just, just the ability to pay attention. If you're not, if you're just kind of going through life and you're not paying attention, then you lose, you miss out on so many opportunities to, to be inspired. But I think if you have, if you're actively looking for it or you're calling it into your life, then, you know, by almost by definition, you, you're, you're asking to become that much more aware and you're paying attention. And, uh, you know, Maya Angelou, uh, said, you know, what's the greatest lesson, you know, that, that you've learned throughout your life. And she actually said, um, uh, I find I, I, I le I've learned to pay attention. You know, that's the greatest gift you can do in life is to pay, att pay attention to the people that you love, pay, pay attention to your surroundings and pay attention to yourself. So yeah, mm -hmm. this is, this is wonderful for me. I'm looking forward to, to learning this uh, and, and putting this tool in my tool belt. Cool. Yeah. It's, a, it's been one that I, I just use so often now, and I don't know what I did without it before. Well, mm. I do know what I did without it before I ran around in circles a yeah. lot. <laughs> um, 
and so the so the first yeah the first way to use it is to invite inspiration into your life and this is just, for me personally this is how I, I use it maybe you can get many different things mm. um, another way that I use it is to so if I have something say I have had an inspiration come through or somebody's asked me to do something and I want to say yes or no to it and I and I and I always you know I, I whenever somebody asks me to do something new I usually take a pause and I'll be like, let me, let me get back to you. And what I do is I go do this practice and then I come back to you with like a solid answer of whether I'm meant to do it or not. And so if you have something or, you know, say you had something come up that you really want to do, uh, you, for me as an artist, I can use examples. It's just like, I would have ideas all the time of different creative projects that I wanted to get into uh different you know themes of drawings that i wanted to start or a series of artwork like uh wondering should i go this route because there's so many roads Absolutely. available what are we doing to pick one over that how do we know that we picked the one that we were meant to be doing yeah. because you can you know get really caught up in your emotions and think like oh no i really feel it you know but you might just be caught up in your emotions and True. You, we all know the emotions are fleeting. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> you know, something you were emotionally uh, super excited about today, tomorrow, you might be like, well, what was I thinking? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're right. And you don't really get, you don't put yourself in that position to self-reflect, you know, in the moment sometimes when you're so caught up with emotion. And so to just ask yourself, is this, you know, is this what I, is this what, I, is this what I'm seeking? Is this what I want? Um, is this right for me? And I think sometimes people usually come to that conclusion after something catastrophic has happened or, you know, you burnt the candle at both ends and if there's a way to do it in the process so that you can, you know, maybe pretend, potentially make a decision that, you know, removes you from that situation or allows you to act in a way that minimizes those feelings. Um, mm -hmm. and that's incredible. That's another great tool. All right. This mm -hmm. is going to be good, Chris. I'm looking forward to both, both of the, using this, uh, as a, as for, as a way to invite inspiration and to confirm whether or not this is something that's right for me. Mm -hmm. And also it's something that's really fun. It, as opposed to say like, oh, you know, say if somebody's criticizing you about your decisions and you, oh, you never think it all through, mm. and, you know, you don't, you don't go through all of the process of, of like calculating the cost benefit analysis. Right. That's not what we're doing here. Um, <laughs> you can, bec uh, because even the intellectual weighing and balancing things isn't also isn't always the best way True. to do some. I mean, obviously those things are can be important once you're, you know, wanting to make um, proper business decisions, and you you need to have people paying attention to mm -hmm. things like that. But I think as we're kicking off an idea and wondering if we should should do it or not, we can ask our inner self because, <laughs> uh, like Matt and I, we like to talk about this quote. It's a, it says. Uh, not all crazy ideas are good ideas, but uh, all great ideas are crazy. Mm. <laughs> and, I love that. So, I love that in the wisdom well. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Your, your intellect might be like, no, that's crazy. I'm not doing that. Um, I think this whole project that we're doing with Seekers of the Eternal is totally crazy. And our yeah. intellectual minds would have told us not to do it because True. it's like so many variables it's a it's a difficult time in the market you know there's not many people doing what we're doing so yeah. we haven't seen that it could be possible you know so true. so in this you know so when i weighed uh, should we do this should i do this should i be you know in a, involved in a project like this i use this practice and also when we are thinking of what should what should i do you know what topic should we talk about for this meta you know for this um uh, episode today i use this practice mm. uh, you know what is it what am i supposed to be talking about because i don't want to be using my brain to come on here and tell you things that may or may not be the right thing i yeah. want to ask that what is the right thing and then it's like okay and then when i wait it it's like yeah it's time to time to do this one so right that's cool <laughs>
So I'll, I'll kind of run over the practice uh, a little bit and some, some words from, from Yogananda okay. as well to kind of just put us into a good space with it. Okay. Um, and this, these will be parts that, that I'll have in, in, the, in the actual affirmation, but I just wanted to read them through so people get uh, familiar with what it's going to be like. And this is words from Swami Kriyananda. He says, affirmation is, a, or, I'm sorry. Swami Kriyananda says, inspiration is of two kinds, the rediscovery or rearrangement of thoughts that already exist in the subconscious mind and the sudden appearance of new thoughts or new insights from the superconscious. The higher inspiration certainly is more to be desired than the lower, for it is based in truth and not in imagination. It is not always easy, however, to recognize the difference between lower and higher inspiration, particularly when the lower is vitalized by the, the emotions. When an inspiration comes, receive it with calm love and see whether, untouched by emotion, its impulse grows stronger or weaker. Love is the water that nourishes true inspiration. And so you can get a bit of a feel, I think, for how this is going to work. It's Swami Kriyananda also said that intuition and calm feeling are synonymous. They're the same thing. Calm feeling is intuition. It's an interesting way to feel what that means. Another way to think about it is that uh, that um, when we have um, when we have anxiety or we have tension or we have um, a um, disharmon disharmonious uh, tension or feeling in the body, that that blocks intuition. It's almost like a radio signal that's coming through, and if there's this um, a weak signal and it's and it's um, causing a static and we're not receiving the the inspiration the intuition is not coming through so uh, in the practice we'll use a, some meditation techniques to get into a calm state before practicing and then then we'll be able to use the practice and hold these thoughts up to the calmness within the actual the actual affirmation, um, just like the last one, we'll repeat it five times. And the, 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 it, the first one, you repeat it uh, with a loud, energetic voice. And it's important as we're doing this to like really um, to mean business when you do it. Don't think like, oh, yeah, this is just something like, like really like get interested in it. Get a super, super curious about it. Mean mm -hmm. business, you know, sit up with a straight spine. You know, if, if, if you're hunched over and, and you're not taking it, to, you know, if you're not being very enthusiastic about it. Right. Um, I guess if, you're, if, you're, if you can't get enthusiasm about it, but you're still here and you still want to practice it, just keep doing it until you get there yes. too. I mean, yeah. you know, you, you'll see a, like a little bit, a little bit of a spark will come. Just, you know, if you're interested in it and you have the willpower to keep doing it, but I want to encourage you now to like start with a smile with this because this is very powerful and it can change your life if you make a practice of this. So Chris, you know, one of the things that happens when you try to focus is you have that, that voice inside your head that says, oh, you know, you, you haven't eaten breakfast yet or, oh, you're, you have to go pick up the dry cleaning in another hour. And it's like, how do you silence that voice or even like, oh, this isn't working you know, um, how do you silence that voice and give this 100% of your intention? Because even, even the most well-intentioned of us have difficult sometimes just getting to that place where we can surrender. So maybe just if you can just give us a couple of uh, quick uh, thoughts on how you get, you know, to a space where you can silence that voice. Yeah, it, it, gets, it gets more and more easy with practice, obviously. This is, a, this is a practice and you're all day long, your brain has been going and thinking about all of these things and then you sit to calm the mind and of course those are going to come up. 
Um, one of the ways that I, I think we can all do together, and I think this can help you jump levels very quickly, obviously daily practice with it, you're going to get better at it. You know, if I was like, hey, this is how you do an ollie on a skateboard, um, you know, oh, how do I do that right away? I don't know. Maybe you can do it right away if you just see me do it and I tell you how I do it and all of a sudden. But if you if you go, no, I'm determined, like I want to do this. And, you you know, every day you're out there, you know, trying again, trying again. And all of a sudden, yeah. Ooh, OK, now now I got it. Oh, yeah, that's how you do it. OK, <laughs> right. That's um, a good point. There's there's something to that. But I think also it remember, it's not. It's not just um, us and our egos doing it. We can call on a higher power because that exists. Like there is like, you know, say with like, um, I, love, I love how in, like the Rastafarians talk about the I and I, the I, the little I connecting with the, mm. the big I, the, the, the true self. It's like this little I going like, I know I'm not this body. I know I'm not just these senses. I know there's something bigger out there and that is my true self. And I'm calling on that to guide me. I'm calling on that to still my mind. And with this project specifically, we're, we're using images of Hanuman. And Hanuman can be for you a a symbol of that higher self. Uh, Hanuman works in many ways for, for the devotee or anybody that's looking to use this as a power symbol. Hanuman is a perfect example of, of the, great, uh, the greatest devotee, the greatest, um, uh, he's controlled the, mon you know, he's a monkey. So he had the monkey mind, you know, a crazy monkey mind that would just running after things. And how does a monkey learn how to become a master of his senses? He, he has done that, you know, so he, he's, he's that powerful. Um, he had been, he had been cursed to think that he was just a regular monkey. So all his life he's running around just being a regular monkey, but he trained his mind just like we're doing. So even if a monkey can do it, then, then we can do it. And we can call on Hanuman, that image of Hanuman to, to be our, um, to be who we're talking to, like even in, in this meditation, in this, in this affirmation where, you know, the prayer that, that we start with says, O oh spirit, thou art all truth. In thee lies the solution to my every need. Inspire me now, Lord. Show me which path to follow of the many that lie before me. And so we're calling on something outside of our egos to help us. So I think if you have a lot of determination and you go into this practice with, I can and I will do this, and I believe that this is going to work. I have faith in the universe. I trust the universe to guide me. I think if you, if you can go in with the more willpower that you have, the more determination, you know, just like somebody that's going to go to the gym and, okay, uh, I want to get. I want to get ripped. Uh, how do I do it? It's like, well, uh, really want it bad, you know, visualize yourself getting bigger, or visualize it, you know, like how badly you want, you know, you're going to wake up some mornings and not want to do it, you know, overcome that, that no saying tendency, that thing in you that there's a life wish and a death wish always involved in what we're doing. Like, Swami Kriyananda, he says, in, there's a French phrase that's um, basically, it says, uh, nostalgia for the mud. Your higher self wants to reach for this, this, this new version of yourself, but you have this nostalgia. The lotus grows out of the mud, becomes this beautiful flower and receives the light of the sun. But we have this nostalgia just to sink back into the bed, not get up, forget our, you know, what we wanted for our, you know, our vision, vision that we had for training our body and our mind. Yeah. And we just want to sink back and die. And, and, oh, maybe if I just give up everything, it's, I'll still get there somehow, but you won't. <laughs> Mud's comfortable, but only for so long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think the more determination that you have going into it, the more you really want it. So for me, this is something that I really want. And when I, 
uh, all too like all of my life when you find you know find something that you're really meant to be doing then you you will get so much yeah. more willpower yeah um so this is so you can like if you don't have a, a meditation practice or any practice that you're doing and you want to start with something like this can be a way for you to a like train your willpower um, to have something where you're like, I really want to want something. <laughs> like, I really want to. So we can do this. Like, if you really want to start wanting something bad, or you really want to start going after things in life, but you don't know what to do, and you feel like, you know, you're you're, you're uninspired. You don't know where to go first. Like, this is this is it. Get as as excited about anything you've ever got excited or enthusiastic about, and let's do this. You know. <laughs> cool. All right. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I think too, like some some words from from Paramahansa Yogananda. This is how to awaken to your true potential, and this is this is another way to to get excited or enthusiastic about this practice. Because when you <laughs> when you find and you know in your heart that you're meant to be doing something, then you can wholeheartedly go after it, like us with seekers of the eternal we've done this you know like we know that we're supposed to be doing this and we're wholeheartedly running after it we're not like wavering like oh maybe we should do this but i think me oh maybe that other thing would be a better idea or that you know there's if you single pointedly laser focused on what you're doing then you will succeed and see it to the end um so yogananda says here he says be sure that what you want is right for you to have. Then use all the forces of your willpower to accomplish your object, always keeping your mind on God. No other desire must be in your heart but to know God. Then all things will come to you. So this is a way to supersede you know, when we talk about like, oh, I'm not going to, uh, you know, this isn't about just weighing and balancing and crunching the numbers and all of that at this, at this point, we're just trying to find out, should I be doing this? Is the, am I meant to be doing this? We'll figure out the details later. <laughs> and a way to do that, you know, we're using the word God here. But the word God is you can switch it out with the universe. I mean, in, in India, the word for God is Satchit Ananda ever conscious, ever existing, ever new bliss. Um, God can be described as the consciousness of infinite goodness. God can be all that is, uh, harmony of the universe, uh, the primal force of all creation. Uh, you, you, you're keeping your mind on that thing that if you get in tune with it you become in harmony with the song that's playing and you don't have to worry you don't have to be afraid so with this practice if if you get the you get the response the calm feeling you get the um uh you get this this feedback that tells you that um this is what i meant to be doing then put all of your effort into it and don't stop and see it to the end you know, I think that's a that's a big part of it too, committing to that. Um, so yeah, so I think that's kind of a good opening to this. The so when we'll be repeating it five times of this affirmation, we'll say it first with a loud energetic voice, secondly with a normal speaking voice, and you say it in a whisper, and then you say it silently in your mind, and then silently again. And with even deeper concentration, the more that you can concentrate without thinking about anything else and putting your gaze, uh, uplifting your gaze to the point between the eyebrows. So with your eyes closed, you can imagine a mountain range in the distance and look at the top of that mountain range. That's where the, the point between the eyebrows is. You keep your gaze fixed there. And Yogananda says that this point between the eyebrows, the spiritual eye, is like a mental microphone or a spiritual broadcasting station where you can broadcast your sacred demands to the infinite. 
So when you focus all of it, and this is all of the great scriptures, even the Bible has um, symbolic uh, language talking about the spiritual eye. This is a this is what all of the awakened masters have been telling us, and it's it is the way to communicate with your higher self. You you get calm. You you know stop putting all of your energy into outward things. You get go inward. You feel the energy moving inward, and then you move that energy up here, and then you put it right here, and then you broadcast your demands to your higher self, and your higher self responds to that. And the way that you feel it, the radio receiver is in your heart. You send out those demands through the spiritual eye, and then you feel in the heart. And that's how this works. So on the, on the fifth time, you repeat it silently again, the gaze uplifted at the point between the eyebrows, aiming to lift your consciousness into super consciousness, into your soul awareness, so that these thoughts become deeply, deeply embedded in all levels of your body, mind, and soul. And then we say, I hold my thoughts up to the calmness within in calmness, I receive inspiration from my higher self. And that's what we'll be repeating together. And so in the meditation, you, like I was saying at the beginning, you can use it to invite inspiration and you can, and you can, you know, I'll, I'll use, uh, and, I'll, and also to a way to calm the mind is I'll be guiding us. I'll be, um, I'll be giving you a little bit of, a, of time to, to sit in, in the silence and then I'll come back in and, and you know, remind you to to put the gaze back at the point between the eyebrows feel in the heart listen and so basically you're learning to listen to um you're lis listening and feeling you're you're you know it doesn't necessarily it won't necessarily come through in a vision or a flash or in words um it'll be just calm feeling, you know, it, maybe it'll come in a vision. It, it, it possibly could, you, but you don't, you don't necessarily look for that or feel like it's not working because you didn't get some um, big show. Um, but we're, we're tuning into calm feeling and the inspiration that you're looking for, say if you were using it in the first way we talked about you, um, you're looking for inspiration in a creative project. What, what should I do here? Uh, for me as an artist, like what should I, what image should I make next? Which deity should I focus on? Uh, uh, or you're looking for inspiration for anything that anything in your life. Um, you're inviting that inspiration, and you're and you're making a practice of that, and giving it, and you're feeling the calmness in your heart, and then that inspiration could come to you directly in that short meditation practice. Or you could, like we were talking about, you could start looking for that inspiration in your life. You could, you, it could come to you in a song. It could come to you while you're watching a movie. It could come to you through a conversation with a friend or a child could say something to you and you're all of a sudden like, whoa, <laughs> that's my answer. Um, you could be looking at a flower or a sunset and all of a sudden the answer, the inspiration comes to you. And when that inspiration comes, you can then use this practice again. Okay, I got an inspiration. I got an idea. I got this idea for a new company or a new product or uh, something that I want to make or something I want to do or somewhere I want to go, uh, a person I want to become be in a relationship with. Should I do that? And so then you take that inspiration that you got and we go through the practice again. I hold that hold that thought up to the calmness within in calmness i receive inspiration from my higher self so now we're looking to see whether that inspiration that we received um, is from the higher or the lower self so is that inspiration is that is that desire to um be with you know start a relationship with this person coming from my emotions am i just like sexually attracted to them so i'm of course i should ask them out or whatever maybe that will go terribly wrong <laughs> but like at the moment you're like really really keen on wanting to do it um what will happen here is when you uh, it says when an inspiration comes Receive it with calm love. 
and see whether untouched by emotion, its impulse grows stronger or weaker. Love is the water that nourishes true inspiration. And so for me, the way that it works is just, just in the same way of if I had this great idea that, you know, this idea that I thought was really great and I walk down the path of, of executing that idea and then all of a sudden I'm like, man, I, I'm just, my heart's not in it anymore. I don't feel like I should be doing this. I wish I wasn't working on this. I got this other idea that seems so much better. How did I get here? Uh, I guess I got to just see it through and finish it. And, and then I'll, uh, so you can spin your wheels going in a lot of directions where your emotions really were telling you this is something you should do. Um, the way that this works for me is I'll be able to feel that same feeling in, quickly like after the meditation when i you know like i'm like thinking about that idea i'm like huh i just don't want to do that anymore <laughs> or after the meditation if you're like wow i really whoa uh, you start to get maybe you get more insights about um the 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 next steps or yeah. like some new idea pop you know some better some uh, way of expanding it you know starts to come through and you're like yeah yeah i really want to do this i really want to do this and I, that's that'll that'll be how it works with it with us and remember it's a practice so i want to see right. if maybe you had any questions there on that uh no i think um i think the way that you described it i feel like everyone can relate to all of those feelings that you get when you are not sure about something or you're not inspired or you've done something that was emotional. And, um, you know, this is really going to allow all of us a chance to just stop and self-reflect. I think that's, in, it's, it's the, maybe the most kindest thing that you can even do for yourself is, is taking a moment to self-reflect on, you know, what you're thinking about something and, um, how you genuinely feel about something. Sometimes it's almost like, you know, I think you probably had this experience where it's like, why, why would I think I would enjoy this? Or why did I think I would, like, why would I even let myself make a decision like this? And it's almost like there's two people, even though mm -hmm. it's just you, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, uh, you know, this really is going to be an eye opener for me at personally, 100%, you know, I, as my work, my work as an author, you can imagine how many people come and say, I'd love to write a book with you, or can I partner with you? And, um, I think you sometimes, if you, especially if you like to please people or you like to help people, it's hard to say no, it's hard to, you know, but you realize when you say no to something, you're saying yes to something else. And maybe that's something else is yourself, but I don't ever put myself in a position to, uh, think like this and give this proper thought and, and then digest it and then come back with, you know, my, an honest, my, an honest, um, answer with, mm -hmm. you know, to whoever I'm, you know, working with or potentially working with. So no, this is great, Chris. I'm excited to, to start. Um, yeah. And touching on something that you said, um, when somebody asks you to do something and, rather than just um because yeah i'm the same way like i always just want to say yes and please people and i don't want them to have uh, hurt their feelings i think like oh chris doesn't want to work on my project or you know you you run through all the things in your yeah. mind of like not wanting to hurt anybody's feelings or whatever um this actually gets me out of that now mm. it, it, it it takes it into a new place where i'm um i let people know that um that i do this practice that i it's like, yeah, I like that idea. That sounds really cool. I, I, I feel it sounds like something I would really enjoy doing. And like, I, I like your idea. Um, I currently, yes, I do want to do that. But I, but I always, you know, I tell, you know, I tell friends or people I'm just like, um, I want to make sure that it's what I'm meant to be doing. So mm. I'm going to go back and, and see if this is something that I'm meant to be doing and, and I'll give you an answer. Right. And if it, if it's not, then it's just, um, yeah, something, something that so and and people like that it's like oh that's cool and then they're kind of learning like oh maybe i should do that too yeah you know? <laughs> yeah and i loved your analogy about like going to the gym or you know if you wanted to go get ripped or you wanted to get into the best shape of your life it it takes multiple experiences in that space in order to get the results that you're looking for and i think even in that vein like this is going to be new for a lot of us you know who have never done this before um, you know, sometimes you may not necessarily know whether or not, um, you know, you, you might, you may try this experience and then come out with an answer that you may not initially feel it was even the right answer. 
do you know what I mean? Like this, this, this may not necessarily, like sometimes the messaging may not even come through clearly to you because you haven't really learned how to even listen to your inner voice yet. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to even training myself and then being patient with myself and forgiving myself. Um, you know, I think I've, I've been in situations before where I can, uh, where you want something so bad or you want to see something so bad that you convince yourself that that's what the experience was, even though it wasn't. Mm -hmm. And um, and then so you end up not necessarily even lying to yourself, but it's like, uh, you know, so, like you said, like if, if you're, if you go out looking for, you looking for something, you're going to find it, whatever mm -hmm. it is that you're looking for. So uh, I think it's just really important to learn how to let go and surrender to the, to the process and, uh, mm -hmm. and give yourself at least, you know, as many, it's a, as many attempts as it takes in order for, you know, for you to feel like you're starting to get something from this experience. That's a great point. That's a great point. You, you know, yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it, 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 you, you may have some great beginner's luck and, and just like, Oh, have some really good intuitive feelings come through. Um, chances are you're going to need to keep practicing. Yeah. It's a practice. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. It's a practice. You'll get better yeah. and better. You'll get better and better at it. You'll get more and more of the nuance of it will come to you because you're also asking for inspiration. So inspiration is going to actually teach you how to do this. You're not going to actually need me so much. Right. You, your, inspir your higher self is going to if you're asking for it, it's going to be inspiring you how to do this practice yeah. better. As you do this practice better, you're going to learn how to do the physical things in your life. And one last, last thought that was coming up for me, a way that I think you might like it too, is you can think of a, so say, say as, a, as a parent to a child, like this is almost like that, that relationship between the higher self and the, and the lower self. Imagine Imagine uh, you as a parent, and you you know that um, it's it's kind of an interesting thing because this is so so say say you as a parent you you knew that your child was destined to uh, for greatness you know say say if you were say like the mother of uh, you know like uh, you, you birthed uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> you knew that Jesus Christ was meant for to be the savior of the world, mm. you know, and say, say, say your son was, was in this time period, Jesus Christ mm. was your son. And you knew that he was, and you wanted that for him. You know, you knew that was his destiny. You as his father, you're, 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 you know, seeing that, but he's, he's still a, a little child. And that as the child grows up, it wants certain things. So, so your, your, your savior of the universe son, you know, decides he really loves video games and just mm. wants to play video games all the time. And you're just like, well, I'm glad you're enjoying the video games, you know, but I really, you, you would start planting seeds right. for helping them out of that, you know, yes, yes. or Jesus Christ, you know, in high school really decides he loves volleyball and wants to be on the Olympic team. <laughs> yes, yes. And you're just like, uh, okay, you know, yeah. mom is proud of him <laughs> for, for whatever, but you're just like trying to plant seeds because you know, he's still destined for such greater things. Yeah, yeah. But Jesus just really wants to play volleyball. He said, I, that's kind of like yourself, you know, it's like, no, nah, I really want to play volleyball. But your higher self is like um, inspiring you through a practice like this. Mm. It's, you're, you're going like, no, nah, I want to listen to you, dad. Like, I feel like you might know some things I don't know. Mm. So you're like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to be open. I, I'm going to try to not go in with like, oh, this is what I want to do. So I'm not hearing you. I'm going to listen to my, higher self my right. father my my heavenly father my divine mother you can look at hanuman as your your dearest friend who knows that you're destined for greatness who sees your true potential in life he he, he can see you like the things that you can't see in yourself mm -hmm. hanuman sees you as this all powerful amazing human that can do anything and you're saying and you're going okay hanuman I want to listen to you. Tell me, tell me, tell me, show me the way. Right. It'll be something so much better than you came up with. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Well, I'm excited, Chris. I think this is going to be a wonderful tool for the community. And, I, you know, I can't even wait to do it myself. And 
Uh, my wife and I actually, I, a part of the personal challenge or weekly challenges I just put up, actually, it's, um, I changed the title a couple of times. It's, you know, it's almost like face your demons or look in the mirror or challenge yourself to be the best version of yourself. Um, but it's the, 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 the personal challenge is to, um, to identify an area in your life where you either have, you feel like you've dropped the ball or that you could be, you could do better and to genuinely like sit on, you know, sit down, um, and, and reflect and where is it that you, that you know, for a fact that you may be even engage in, engaging in self, some form of self-sabotage where you are the obstacle in your own way. And, and to have the courage to, to identify, you know, I've, I've always heard people say, you know, you'll never be able to change what you're not willing to acknowledge. So once you've identified that, then committing to, to being better at it means giving it time and giving it focus and, and attention and then and taking action. And so one of the top areas that I pointed out was, you know, perhaps it's spending time with your family or with your friends or with your children and you know, I think about the time I, the time spent sometimes where I'm, I'm working on different projects, whether it's, you know, Seekers of the Eternal or my books as an author or, or, or something else that I'm passionate about um, in my life that's not my family. And I think, wow, like I really got to spend more time with my wife or with my kids. And sometimes we, when we do those kinds of things, it's, it, it's like, um, I found myself sometimes just being sitting on the couch and, but I found both my wife and I both on our phones individually. So even though we're both there, we're 100% disconnected Mm. from one another. Really that's what, you know, having an electronic and a phone in your hand, it allows you to almost disconnect from the real world. And we convince ourselves like, oh, we spent Friday night, we spent the, the evening together, but we really didn't. We were together, but we were completely alone. Um, mm. and, uh, and I think this is the kind of exercise that I think people can do on their own, but how wonderful would it be if you have an opportunity to do something like this, um, with somebody that you love and both of you having a chance to just sit down and focus on this as an exercise, um, mm. you know, that might even bring you closer together. So I'm just, I'm just trying to think about, oh yeah, you know, the this. conversations that you would have would be so much more interesting, yeah. you know, you can talk about the results of it and like, all right, I'm going to go back. Let's do it again. And, mm. You know, oh, I had an inspiration come through. I'm going to weigh it. And then you can talk about it and keep yeah. doing it. You know, yeah. that's really beautiful. That would be, that's a cool vision to think about yeah. doing that with a, uh, with a friend or a, or a spouse or a partner. Yeah. And I would, as you were saying, talking, I was thinking how this practice also can go hand in hand with the, the challenges. Mm. Uh, because if you're, you know, you, you're with with that one that you just described okay um find an area in your life that that you that needs improving what is that you can take you can make that your question with this you know what part what area of my life would be best to Mm. apply this this challenge to and then that kind of gives you action items you know oh i love that yeah um tonight actually uh you know, Chris, every Thursday evening from 8 to 9 p.m. in Seekers of the Eternal Discord, you know, you get a chance to connect and and, uh, and just chop it up with Chris. And uh, uh, it would be wonderful, um, Chris, uh, you know, have a quick look at those weekly challenges and maybe even ask the community and see whether or not they've taken any of them. It's been the most recent ones on. Mm-hmm. And, and this is just a really great tool, as you said, that they can use, that we can all use to perhaps take those challenges on and hopefully they wouldn't feel so, so difficult or daunting. Yeah. I'm so inspired to see people taking up these challenges. It's so cool. I yeah. think having that, the, that effect alone of, of like, if, if this project where people were only doing that, it's already a success. Yeah. It's amazing to think about the ripples uh, that come out into the world just from making those just, just deciding to do these things that are making your, you know, giving you more and more willpower, making your relationships stronger, teaching you to, to have some discipline. It's, it's, uh, it's amazing what, what that is already doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, let's do it, Chris. Yeah. Sounds good. So yeah, tune into the, so there'll be two episodes here. This will be part A and then part B you can uh, practice with the the affirmation and the meditation practice there. So we look forward to hearing about how it's going for everybody. And we'll be back again next week.